MTOR inhibitors, Wikipedia article audio. MTOR inhibitors are a class of drugs that inhibit the mechanistic target of rapamycin, which is a serine-slash-threonine-specific protein kinase that belongs to the family of phosphatidylinositol-3 kinase-related kinases. MTOR regulates cellular metabolism, growth, and proliferation by forming and signaling through two protein complexes, MTORC1 and MTORC2. The most established MTOR inhibitors are so-called ROPALOGs, which have shown tumor responses in clinical trials against various tumor types. History Protein kinases and their inhibitors MTOR signaling pathway MTOR signaling pathway in human cancer Development of MTOR inhibitors First generation MTOR inhibitors Rapamycin and Rapalogs Serolimus Temzerolimus Everolimus Ritiforolimus Second generation MTOR inhibitors Mechanism of action Effects in cancer cells Effects on tumor angiogenesis Structure activity relationship Adverse events Biomarkers Sensitivity ADP-competitive MTOR kinase inhibitors MTOR-slash-PI-3K dual inhibitors MTORC1-slash-MTORC2 dual inhibitors Limitations of new generation MTOR inhibitors Future the discovery of MTOR was made a few decades ago while investigating the mechanism of action of its inhibitor, rapamycin. Rapamycin was first discovered in 1975 in a soil sample from Easter Island of South Pacific, also known as Rapa Nui, from where its name is derived. Rapamycin is a macrolid produced by the microorganism Streptomyces hygroscopicus and showed antifungal properties. Shortly after its discovery, immunosuppressive properties were detected, which later led to the establishment of rapamycin as an immunosuppressant. In the 1980s, Rapamycin was also found to have anti-cancer activity although the exact mechanism of action remained unknown until many years later. In the 1990s there was a dramatic change in this field due to studies on the mechanism of action of rapamycin and the identification of the drug target. It was found that rapamycin inhibited cellular proliferation and cell cycle progression. Research on MTOR inhibition has been a growing branch in science and has promising results. In general, Protein kinases are classified in two major categories based on their substrate specificity, protein tyrosine kinases and protein serine-slash-threonine kinases. Dual specificity kinases are subclass of the tyrosine kinases. MTOR is a kinase within the family of phosphatidylinositol-3 kinase-related kinases which is a family of serine-slash-threonine protein kinases, with a sequence similarity to the family of lipid kinases, PI3KS. These kinases have different biological functions, but are all large proteins with common domain structure. PIKKs have four domains at the protein level, which distinguish them from other protein kinases. From the N-terminus to the C-terminus, these domains are named frappatm triop, the kinase domain, the PIKK regulatory domain, and the fat C-terminal. The fat domain, consisting of four alpha helices, is N-terminal to KD, but that part is referred to as the FKBP12 rapamycin binding domain, 
which binds the FKBP12 rapamycin complex. The fat domain consists of repeats, referred to as heat. Specific protein activators regulate the PIKK kinases but binding of them to the kinase complex causes a conformational change that increases substrate access to the kinase domain. Protein kinases have become popular drug targets. They have been targeted for the discovery and design of small molecule inhibitors and biologics as potential therapeutic agents. Small molecule inhibitors of protein kinases generally prevent either phosphorylation of protein substrates or autophosphorylation of the kinase itself. It appears that growth factors, amino acids, ADP, and oxygen levels regulate MTOR signaling. Several downstream pathways that regulate cell cycle progression, translation, initiation, Transcriptional stress responses, protein stability, and survival of cells are signaling through MTOR. The serine-3-anine kinase MTOR is a downstream effector of the PI3K-AKT pathway, and forms two distinct multi-protein complexes, MTORC1 and MTORC2. These two complexes have a separate network of protein partners, feedback loops, substrates, and regulators. MTORC1 consists of MTOR and two positive regulatory subunits, Raptor and mammalian LST8, and two negative regulators, proline-rich AKT substrate 40 and Deptor. MTORC2 consists of MTOR, MLST8, MSIN1, Prater, Richter, and Deptor. MTORC1 is sensitive to rapamycin but MTORC2 is considered to be resistant and is generally insensitive to nutrients and energy signals. MTORC2 is activated by growth factors, phosphorylates PKC-alpha, AKT, and Paxilin, and regulates the activity of the small GT PASE, RAC, and Rho related to cell survival, migration and regulation of the actin cytoskeleton. The MTORC1 signaling cascade is activated by phosphorylated AKT and results in phosphorylation of S6K1 and 4EBP1, which lead to mRNA translation. Many human tumors occur because of dysregulation of MTOR signaling, and can confer higher susceptibility to inhibitors of MTOR. Deregulations of multiple elements of the MTOR pathway, like PI3K amplification slash mutation, PTEN loss of function, AKT overexpression, and S6K1, 4EBP1, and EIF4E overexpression have been related to many types of cancers. Therefore, MTOR is an interesting therapeutic target for treating multiple cancers, both the MTOR inhibitors themselves or in combination with inhibitors of other pathways. Upstream, PI3K-AKT signaling is deregulated through a variety of mechanisms, including overexpression or activation of growth factor receptors, such as HER2 and IGFR, mutations in PI3K and mutations-slash-amplifications of AKT. Tumor suppressor phosphatase and tensin homologue deleted on chromosome 10 is a negative regulator of PI3K signaling. In many cancers the PTEN expression is decreased and may be downregulated through several mechanisms, including mutations, loss of heterozygosity, methylation, and protein instability. Downstream, the MTOR effectors S6 kinase 1, eukaryotic initiation factor 4E binding protein 1 and eukaryotic initiation factor 4E are related to cellular transformation. S6K1 is a key regulator of cell growth and also phosphorylates other important targets. 
Both EIF4E and S6K1 are included in cellular transformation and their overexpression has been linked to poor cancer prognosis. Since the discovery of MTOR, much research has been done on the subject, using rapamycin and rapalogs to understand its biological functions. The clinical results from targeting this pathway were not as straightforward as thought at first. Those results have changed the course of clinical research in this field. Initially, rapamycin was developed as an antifungal drug against Candida albicans, Aspergillus fumigatus, and Cryptococcus neoformans. Few years later its immunosuppressive properties were detected. Later studies led to the establishment of rapamycin as a major immunosuppressant against transplant rejection, along with cyclosporin A. By using rapamycin in combination with cyclosporin A, it enhanced the rejection prevention in renal transplantation. Therefore, it was possible to use lower doses of cyclosporin which minimized toxicity of the drug. In the 1980s rapamycin was evaluated by the Developmental Therapeutic Branch of the National Cancer Institute. It was discovered that rapamycin had an anti-cancer activity and was a non-cytotoxic agent with cytostatic activity against several human cancer types. However, due to unfavorable pharmacokinetic properties, the development of MTOR inhibitors for the treatment of cancer was not successful at that time. Since then, rapamycin has also shown to be effective for preventing coronary artery restenosis and for the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. The development of rapamycin as an anti-cancer agent began again in the 1990s with the discovery of Temzirolimus. This was a novel soluble rapamycin derivative that had a favorable toxicological profile in animals. More rapamycin derivatives with improved pharmacokinetics and reduced immunosuppressive effects have since then been developed for the treatment of cancer. These rapalogs include Temzirolimus, Evrolimus, and Ritiforolimus which are being evaluated in cancer clinical trials. Rapamycin analogs have similar therapeutic effects as rapamycin. However they have improved hydrophilicity and can be used for oral and intravenous administration. In 2012 National Cancer Institute listed more than 200 clinical trials testing the anti-cancer activity of rapalogs both as monotherapy or as a part of combination therapy for many cancer types. Rapalogs, which are the first-generation MTOR inhibitors, have proven effective in a range of preclinical models. However, the success in clinical trials is limited to only a few rare cancers. Animal and clinical studies show that rapalogs are primarily cytostatic, and therefore effective as disease stabilizers rather than for regression. The response rate in solid tumors where rapalogs have been used as a single-agent therapy have been modest. Due to partial MTOR inhibition as mentioned before, rapalogs are not sufficient for achieving a broad and robust anti-cancer effect, at least when used as monotherapy. Another reason for the limited success is that there is a feedback loop between MTORC1 and AKT in certain tumor cells. It seems that MTORC1 inhibition by rapalogs fails to repress a negative feedback loop that results in phosphorylation and activation of AKT. These limitations have led to the development of the second generation of MTOR inhibitors. Rapamycin and rapalogs are small molecule inhibitors, which have been evaluated as anti-cancer agents. The rapalogs have more favorable pharmacokinetic profile compared to rapamycin, the parent drug, despite the same binding sites for MTOR and FKBP12. The natural antibiotic, rapamycin, or serolimus, a cytostatic agent, 
has been used in combination therapy with corticosteroids and cyclosporin in patients who received kidney transplantation to prevent organ rejection both in the US and Europe, due to its unsatisfying pharmacokinetic properties. In 2003, the US Food and Drug Administration approved sirolimus eluting coronary stents, which are used in patients with narrowing of coronary arteries, or so-called atherosclerosis. Recently rapamycin has shown effective in the inhibition of growth of several human cancers and murine cell lines. Rapamycin is the main MTOR inhibitor, but deforolimus, everolimus, and temzerolimus, are the newly developed rapamycin analogues. The rapamycin analog Temzerolimus is also a non-cytotoxic agent which delays tumor proliferation. Temzerolimus is prodrug of rapamycin. It is approved by the US Food and Drug Administration and the European Medicines Agency, for the treatment of renal cell carcinoma. Temzerolimus has higher water solubility than rapamycin and is therefore administrated by intravenous injection. It was approved in May 30, 2007, by FDA for the treatment of advanced RCC. Everolimus is the second novel rapamycin analog. From March 30, 2009 to May 5, 2011 the US FDA approved Everolimus for the treatment of advanced renal cell carcinoma after failure of treatment with sunitinib or sorafenib, subependymal giant cell astrocytoma associated with tuberous sclerosis, and progressive neuroendocrine tumors of pancreatic origin. In July and August 2012, two new indications were approved for advanced hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancer in combination with eczema stana, and pediatric and adult patients with SEGA. In 2009 and 2011, it was also approved throughout the European Union for advanced breast cancer, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, advanced renal cell carcinoma, and SEGA in patients with tuberous sclerosis. Ritiforolimus, or deforolimus, is the newest rapamycin analog and it is not a prodrug. Like temzerolimus it can be administrated intravenously, an oral formulation is being estimated for treatment of sarcoma. It was not on market in June 2012, since FDA wanted more human testing on it due to its effectiveness and safety. The second generation of MTOR inhibitors is known as ADP-competitive MTOR kinase inhibitors. MTORC1-MTORC2 dual inhibitors are designed to compete with ADP in the catalytic site of MTOR. They inhibit all of the kinase-dependent functions of MTORC1 and MTORC2 and therefore, block the feedback activation of PI3K-AKT signaling, unlike ROPALOGs that only target MTORC1. These types of inhibitors have been developed and several of them are being tested in clinical trials. Like ROPALOGs, they decrease protein translation, attenuate cell cycle progression, and inhibit angiogenesis in many cancer cell lines and also in human cancer. In fact they have been proven to be more potent than ROPALOGs. Theoretically, the most important advantages of these MTOR inhibitors is the considerable decrease of AKT phosphorylation on MTORC2 blockade and in addition to a better inhibition on MTORC1. However, some drawbacks exist. Even though these compounds have been effective in rapamycin in sensitive cell lines, they have only shown limited success in CRAS driven tumors. This suggests that combinational therapy may be necessary for the treatment of these cancers. Another drawback is also their potential toxicity. These facts have raised concerns about the long-term efficacy of these types of inhibitors.
The close interaction of MTOR with the PI3K pathway has also led to the development of MTOR slash PI3K dual inhibitors. Compared with drugs that inhibit either MTORC1 or PI3K, these drugs have the benefit of inhibiting MTORC1, MTORC2, and all the catalytic isoforms of PI3K. Targeting both kinases at the same time reduces the upregulation of PI3K, which is typically produced with an inhibition on MTORC1. The inhibition of the PI3K slash MTOR pathway has been shown to potently block proliferation by inducing G1 arrest in different tumor cell lines. Strong induction of apoptosis and autophagy has also been seen. Despite good promising results, there are preclinical evidence that some types of cancers may be insensitive to this dual inhibition. The dual PI3K slash MTOR inhibitors are also likely to have increased toxicity. The studies of rapamycin as immunosuppressive agent enabled us to understand its mechanism of action. It inhibits T-cell proliferation and proliferative responses induced by several cytokines, including interleukin-1, IL-2, IL-3, IL-4, IL-6, IGF, PDGF, and colony-stimulating factors. Rapamycin inhibitors and rapalogs can target tumor growth both directly and indirectly. Direct impact of them on cancer cells depend on the concentration of the drug and certain cellular characteristics. The indirect way, is based on interaction with processes required for tumor angiogenesis. Rapamycin and rapalogs cross-link the immunophilin FK506 binding protein to Crolimus or FKBP12, through its methoxy group. The rapamycin FKBP12 complex interferes with FRB domain of MTOR. Molecular interaction between FKBP12, MTOR, and rapamycin can last for about three days. The inhibition of MTOR blocks the binding of the accessory protein raptor to MTOR, but that is necessary for downstream phosphorylation of S6K1 and 4EBP1. As a consequence, S6K1 dephosphorylates, which reduces protein synthesis and decreases cell motility and size. Rapamycin induces dephosphorylation of 4-EBP1 as well, resulting in an increase in P27 and a decrease in cyclin D1 expression. That leads to late blockage of G1-S cell cycle. Rapamycin has shown to induce cancer cell death by stimulating autophagy or apoptosis, but the molecular mechanism of apoptosis in cancer cells has not yet been fully resolved. One suggestion of the relation between MTOR inhibition and apoptosis might be through the downstream target S6K1, which can phosphorylate BAD, a pro-apoptotic molecule, on SCR136. That reaction breaks the binding of BAD to BCLXL and BCL2, a mitochondrial death inhibitors, resulting in inactivation of BAD and decreased cell survival. Rapamycin has also shown to induce P53 independent apoptosis in certain types of cancer. Tumor angiogenesis rely on interactions between endothelial vascular growth factors which can all activate the PI3K slash AKT slash MTOR in endothelial cells, pericytes, or cancer cells. Example of these growth factors are angiopoietin 1, ANG2, basic fibroblast growth factor, efrin B2, vascular endothelial growth factor and members of the tumor growth factor beta superfamily. One of the major stimuli of angiogenesis is hypoxia, resulting in activation of hypoxia-inducible transcription factors and expression of ANG2, BFGF, PDGF, VEGF, and VEGFR. 
Inhibition of HIF-1 alpha translation by preventing PDGF slash PDGFR and VEGF slash VEG for can result from MTOR inhibition. A G0 G1 cell cycle blockage can be the consequence of inactivation of MTOR in hypoxia activated pericytes and endothelial cells. There are some evidence that extended therapy with rapamycin may have effect on AKT and MTORC2 as well. The pipicolate region of rapamycin structure seems necessary for rapamycin binding to FKBP12. This step is required for further binding of rapamycin to the MTOR kinase, which is the key enzyme in many biological actions of rapamycin. The high affinity of rapamycin binding to FKBP12 is explained by number of hydrogen bonds through two different hydrophobic binding pockets, and this has been revealed by X-ray crystal structure of the compound bound to the protein. The structural characteristics common to temzerolimus and serolimus, the pipe colic acid, tricarbonyl region from C13C15, and lactone functionalities play the key role in binding groups with the FKBP12. The most important hydrogen bonds are the lactone carbonyl oxygen at C21 to the backbone NH of ILE56, amide carbonyl at C15 to the phenolic group on the side chain of TYRA2, and the hydroxyl proton at the hemiketal carbon, C13 to the side chain of ASP37. Structural changes to the rapamycin structure can affect binding to MTOR. This could include both direct and indirect binding as a part of binding to FKBP12. Interaction of the FKBP12 rapamycin complex with MTOR corresponds with conformational flexibility of the effector domain of rapamycin. This domain consists of molecular regions that make hydrophobic interactions with the FKB domain and triony region from C1-C6, methoxy group at C7, and methyl groups at C33, C27, and C25. All changes of the macrolid ring can have unpredictable effects on binding and therefore, make determination of SAR for ropologs problematic. Rapamycin contains no functional groups that ionize in the pH range 1 to 10 and therefore, are rather insoluble in water. Despite its effectiveness in preclinic cancer models, its poor solubility in water, stability and the long half-life elimination made its parenteral use difficult, but the development of soluble rapamycin analogs vanquished various barriers. Nonetheless. The rapamycin analogs that have been approved for human use are modified at C43 hydroxyl group and show improvement in pharmacokinetic parameters as well as drug properties, for example solubility. Rapamycin and temzerolimus have similar chemical structures and bind to FKBP12, though their mechanism of action differs. Temzerolimus is a dihydroxymethyl propionic acid ester of rapamycin, and its first derivative. Therefore, it is more water-soluble, and due to its water solubility it can be given by intravenous formulation. Everolimus has O2 hydroxyethyl chain substitution and deforolimus has a phosphine oxide substitution at position C43 in the lactone ring of rapamycin. Deforolimus has C43 secondary alcohol moiety of the cyclohexyl group of rapamycin that was substituted with phosphonate and phosphonate groups, preventing the high affinity binding to MTOR and FKBP. Computational modeling studies helped the synthesize of the compound. Treatment with MTOR inhibitors can be complicated by adverse events. The most frequently occurring adverse events are stomatitis, rash, anemia, fatigue, hyperglycemia slash hypertriglyceridemia, decreased appetite, nausea, and diarrhea. Additionally, 
interstitial lung disease is an adverse event of particular importance. MDRI-induced ILD often is asymptomatic or mild symptomatic, but can be very severe as well. Even fatalities have been described. Careful diagnosis and treatment therefore is essential. Recently, a new diagnostic and therapeutic management approach has been proposed. Identification of predictive biomarkers of efficacy for tumor types that are sensitive to MTOR inhibitors remains a major issue. Possible predictive biomarkers for tumor response to MTOR inhibitors, as have been described in glioblastoma, breast, and prostate cancer cells, may be the differential expression of MTOR pathway proteins, PTEN, AKT, and S6. Thus, this data is based on preclinical assays, based on in vitro cultured tumor cell lines, which suggest that the effects of MTOR inhibitors may be more pronounced in cancers displaying loss of PTEN functions or PIK3CA mutations. However, the use of PTEN, PIK3CA mutations, and AKT phosphostatus for predicting Rapalog sensitivity has not been fully validated in clinic. To date, attempts to identify biomarkers of Rapalog response have been unsuccessful. Clinical and translational data suggest that sensitive tumor types, with adequate parameters and functional apoptosis pathways, might not need high doses of MTOR inhibitors to trigger apoptosis. In most cases, cancer cells might only be partially sensitive to MTOR inhibitors due to redundant signal transduction or lack of functional apoptosis signaling pathways. In situations like this, high doses of MTOR inhibitors might be required. In recent study of patients with renal cell carcinoma, resistance to Temzirolimus was associated with low levels of PAKT and PS6K1, that play the key role in MTOR activation. These data strongly suggests number of tumors with an activated PI3K-AKT-MTOR signaling pathway that does not respond to MTOR inhibitors. For future studies it is recommended to exclude patients with low or negative PAKT levels from trials with MTOR inhibitors. Current data is insufficient to predict sensitivity of tumors to rapamycin. However, the existing data allows us to characterize tumors that might not respond to rapalogs. These second-generation MTOR inhibitors bind to ADP binding site in MTOR kinase domain required for the functions of both MTORC1 and MTORC2, and result in down-regulation of MTOR signaling pathway. Due to PI3K and MTORC2 ability to regulate AKT phosphorylation, these two compounds play a key role in minimizing the feedback activation of AKT. Several, so-called MTOR-PI3K dual inhibitors, have been developed and are in early-stage preclinical trials and show promising results. Their development has been benefited from previous studies with PI3K selective inhibitors. The activity of these small molecules from Rapalog activity differs in the way by blocking both MTORC1-dependent phosphorylation of S6K1 and MTORC2-dependent phosphorylation of AKT SCR473 residue. Dual MTOR-PI3K inhibitors include Dactolisub, BGT226, SF1126, PKI-587 and many more. For example, Novartis has developed the compound NVPBE-235 that was reported to inhibit tumor growth in various preclinical models. It enhances anti-tumor activity of some other drugs such as vincristine. Dactolisib seems to inhibit effectively both wild-type and mutant form of PI3KCA 
which suggests its use towards wide types of tumors. Studies have shown superior antiproliferative activity to ropologs and in vivo models have confirmed these potent antineoplastic effects of dual mtor pi 3 k inhibitors. These inhibitors target isoforms of PI3K along with ADP binding sites of MTORC1 and MTORC2 by blocking PI3K-AKT signaling, even in cancer types with mutations in this pathway. Numder-specific inhibitors came forth from screening and drug discovery efforts. These compounds block activity of both MTOR complexes and are called MTORC1 slash MTORC2 dual inhibitors. Compounds with this characteristics such as sapanazertib, AZD8055, and AZD2014 have entered clinical trials. A series of these MTOR kinase inhibitors have been studied. Their structure is derived from morpholinopyrosolipyrimidine scaffold. Improvements of this type of inhibitors have been made by exchanging the morpholines with bridged morpholines and pyrosolipyrimidine inhibitors and results showed increased selectivity to MTOR by 26,000-fold. Although the new generation of MTOR inhibitors hold great promise for anti-cancer therapy and are rapidly moving into clinical trials, there are many important issues that determine their success in the clinic. First of all predictable biomarkers for benefit of these inhibitors are not available. It appears that genetic determinants predispose cancer cells to be sensitive or resistant to these compounds. Tumors that depend on PI3K-MTOR pathway should respond to these agents but it is unclear if compounds are effective in cancers with distinct genetic lesions. Inhibition of MTOR is a promising strategy for treatment of number of cancers. Limited clinical activity of selective MTORC1 agents have made them unlikely to have impact in cancer treatment. The development of competitive ADP catalytic inhibitors have the ability to block both MTORC1 and MTORC2. The limitations of currently available ropologs have led to new approaches to MTOR targeting. Studies suggest that MTOR inhibitors may have anti-cancer activity in many cancer types such as RCC, neuroendocrine tumors, breast cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, sarcoma, and large B-cell lymphoma. One major limitation for the development of MTOR inhibition therapy is that biomarkers are not presently available to predict which patient will respond to them. A better understanding of the molecular mechanisms that are involved in the response of cancer cells to MTOR inhibitors are still required so this can be possible. A way to overcome the resistance and improve efficacy of MTOR targeting agents may be with stratification of patients and selection of drug combination therapies. This may lead to a more effective and personalized cancer therapy. Although further research is needed, MTOR targeting still remains an attractive and promising therapeutic option for the treatment of cancer.